What is up? What is going on, everybody? I am back with another Seattle Mariners video, and we have a flurry of moves to talk about here as one trade has for sure gone down and another one is possibly in the works. Before I dive into it, do me a favor, hit that subscribe button if you're new here, hit the like button and turn on notifications as well for future videos. So the Mariners, the first trade, the Mariners are for sure sent Robbie Ray to the San Francisco Giants in exchange for pitcher Anthony, right-handed pitcher Anthony DeScalfini and outfielder, checking my notes here, Mitch Haniger, is that how it's pronounced? Haniger? No, we know Mitch Haniger very well, and Mitch is back in the Pacific Northwest. And then there's another rumor uh, reported by Ken Rosenthal that the Mariners are going to be sending Jose Caballero to the Tampa Bay Rays in exchange for outfielder Luke Rayley. Now, that one is not official yet, um, but it apparently is in the works and should happen today. Um, we'll see if that's exactly what it is. I'll do another video on that. Uh, trade as well and, and break it down. I'll talk a little bit about Luke Rayley in this video. Um, for a pretty big trade, a very weird trade, right? Like it's not prospects for proven major leaguers. It's essentially an injured major leaguer for a guy that's injured a lot, major leaguer, and then another guy thrown in, I think, to kind of take on salary to even the trade a little bit. So Robbie Ray goes to the Giants. The Mariners get out of that contract. They take on Mitch Haniger's deal and Dee Scalfini's um, I believe Rosenthal reported the Mariners are getting some cash as well. So the Mariners do come out, I believe, about six to seven million ahead um, in this deal, which, listen, six, seven million could be another player you can sign this offseason. And essentially, to me, this trade is the Mariners taking depth, starting pitching, and acquiring it from a team that has outfield depth. You've got a big contract player in Robbie Ray, who, truthfully, we don't know if he's going to pitch in 2024. I know they talked that after the All Star break. Listen, we, we've heard those things before with guys, and that just keeps extending. And it wouldn't shock me if Robbie Ray does not pitch in 2024. It wouldn't shock me if he does either. Um, and, and with the development, remember when they signed Robbie Ray, Logan Gilbert had only pitched, um, you know, one, f not even a full season of the bigs. George Kirby hadn't come up, come up yet and developed. So it made sense they didn't have Luis Castillo. Now you've got Castillo, Kirby, and Gilbert have proven that they are mainstays in this rotation plus the development of Brian Wu and Bryce Miller, Robbie Ray and that contract, you kind of want to get out from it, right? I'm not against Robbie Ray. I like Robbie Ray, but there's no reason to be gung. If you can trade that contract, go ahead and do it. And it goes to a team in the Giants that they have a ton of outfield depth, so they probably look at it the same way. Hey, if we can get out of Mitch Hanniger's contract, we should do that. Hanniger signed a three-year, $43 million deal with the Giants. He has two years left on that deal. The Mariners will take it over. The Mariners fill an outfield spot that they desperately need. I don't think we want to go into next year with Cade Marlowe as an everyday player. I'm not against Cade Marlowe or anything like that, but um, it makes sense that this team went and got an outfielder. We've talked about the different options that are available to them. Um, I never thought of Mitch Hanniger, to be perfectly honest. Um, one of the reasons is, quite frankly, Mitch Hanniger was not very good last year and injured and was not all that great in 2022 either at injured. So, you know, I, I don't think this is necessarily like a, oh my gosh, yes. I mean, I'm excited to have Mitch Haniger back. I love Mitch Haniger. Um, Should be a good move in the clubhouse as well. I imagine that, um, you know, those guys will be excited to have Mitch back. Um, but I think it's kind of a, hey, take this contract. We'll take Mitch back and hopefully, you know, maybe we can get somewhat close to 2021 Mitch Haniger. I, I don't think you'll maybe get that kind of offensive production, but maybe somewhere between 21 and 22. Um, and, and I think it can work out. D Scalfini is interesting ish. Um, he's not very good. In fact, we'll pull up his savant page real quick here. Oh, you know what? I can't, I am on the wrong, um, video recording thing. It's a lot of blue in his Savant page. I'll leave it at that and you guys can go look it up. It's not pretty. Um, in 2021, D. Scalfini pitched 167 innings. In 22, he pitched 19 innings. And in 23, he pitched 99 innings. In 22, he missed time with an ankle injury. And in 23, he missed time with a hip flexor injury. Um, uh, he's projected to have a 4.46 fit by Steamer in 2024 and 148 innings pitched. You know, as a back end number five, number six starter, I, I think he can be okay. Um, again, the Savant page is not pretty, but I, I don't need D. Scalfini to be great. He just kind of needs to eat innings and be there in case of an injury. 
and, and give you, you know, that 100, 120 innings, something along those lines. Maybe you put him in the bullpen as a long reliever, essentially a better Luke Weaver, maybe for lack of a better term, um, is what he can do. And we'll see what ends up happening with Wu and Miller, if they still end up trading one of those guys for a bat um, or not. But if not, it gives you some depth. I, I wouldn't be shocked if D. Scalfini doesn't even make the team or if they trade him in, in another trade. I imagine that they took him on because one, I think the Mariners do want to add a little bit of pitching depth, a number six, seven, you know, low end number five starter, just someone that can be there for depth purposes. And the Giants probably weren't willing to take on race contract unless they could get out of the 12 million they owe D. Scalfini. So they threw in a, few, a little bit of cash and sent De Scalfini to the Mariners. So I wouldn't read too much into him. Um, the injury history is legit. It's not anything, though, that seems chronic where he would necessarily be guaranteed to miss time. Um, like I said, I'd be lying if I was super excited about De Scalfini. Um, but, and we'll see what happens with Wu and Miller and all that. Um, those guys obviously penciled to be better starters than De Scalfini, but you know, you kind of always need that six, seven starter. Remember Chris Flexen last year that they had him and he ended up being a disaster. Then Marco gets hurt. Wu and Miller will kind of rushed up to the bigs. D Scalfini, if he does stay with the team, gives you a little bit of a bridge, right? Someone that can come in and make three, four starts and not derail your season. Um, I'd feel much more comfortable with him making that start last year in Tampa than Luke Weaver, somebody like that. So, um, it can definitely work out and he's had some good seasons. He's 34. He's a veteran. He's been around a while. Um, but hopefully a little bit of a bounce back there. And yeah, I, I, I think you, you couldn't expect to get really anything from Robbie Ray this season. Um, there's that opt out. I believe Robbie Ray has the option to opt out after 2024. Um, I don't know if he necessarily would have, it's a lot of guaranteed money. I don't think he would have opted out, but you just don't know, right? That there's, there's too much of a risk. I, I know the talk was Ray would be back after the All-Star break. I was never banking on much from Robbie Ray um, in 2024. Anything he would have given you would have been gravy, in my opinion. Um, and, and now you move him. And listen, if you're going to trade Robbie Ray, you're not going to get top prospects from anybody or anything super exciting. You're going to get a, another injured player, right? Like that's kind of what you're going to get in that market. If the team for a team to be willing to take on Robbie Ray, they're going to be like, Hey, we'll give you, I guess, Mitch Hanniger. So it's kind of, to me, you know, teams trading for depth and, and taking shots for uh, taking shots at upside, right? For the giants, it makes sense. They need some pitching depth. If they can get Robbie Ray healthy for 2024, 2025, it's a big ballpark. He can have success there and that can absolutely work out. Uh, if Mitch Haniger can stay healthy, you know, maybe get something kind of closer to 21 or at least 2022 Mitch Haniger, which wasn't great, but is still a productive hitter and better than what the Mariners currently currently have in the outfield. Now, there's also been rumors of Caballero being traded for Luke Rayleigh. Luke Rayleigh's really interesting from the Rays. Uh, last year in his first real full first full season in the bigs at age 28. Um, he slashed in 118 games and 406 plate appearances. He slashed an average of 249, OBP of 333, slugging of 490, a weighted on base average of 353. <clears throat> excuse me, still getting over this cold flu, and a WRC plus of 130. Now, Steber projects him to be a lot lower than that this year. Um, for 2024, project to be 231, 313, 411. Uh, Rayleigh is a left-handed hitting outfielder. Um, again, the Savant page, not great. It's better than D Scalfini's um, for sure for Luke Rayleigh. Let me see if I can pull it. I can't show it, but I will pull it up for myself here. Um, the barrel rate is great. The hard hit rate is great. The average exit velo is great. Um, T-Mobile is a park that lends itself well to pull hitters, um, which looking at the spray chart, it really looks like a pretty pure pull hitter. Um, so there's definitely some advantages to having him there. I think he can have a lot of success strikes out a ton, like a lot. So all the talk about cutting down on strikeouts and, and they have right. Like Gino Kellenic Teo were big strikeout guys. Um, you know, Mitch Garver's not, I, I would say elite at not strike out, but he's not terrible. L Luke Rayleigh strikes out a lot. So you are still adding a very, very high strikeout guy. If this deal goes down, <laughs> but again, a solid season last year, his first real full year, put up an 823 OPS. Um, 
good, uh, really good base runner as well. Uh, 87th percentile for sprint speed. Um, so you kind of replace Caballero, you, you know, his main thing is defense and base running with a guy that is good at that as well. As well. Rayleigh's range in the outfield is in the 37th percentile, but his arm strength uh, is in the 89th percentile. Uh, expe- expected weighted on base average is in the 53rd percentile. That's solid. Expected batting average is low. You're getting that kind of slugger, right? That low batting average, high slugging player. Um, the chase rate is low or, or in the blue 31 percentile. The whiff and K um, percentages are in the first and seventh percentile. So very, very, very low there. So you are going to get a guy that's going to strike out a lot. But for Caballero, I'm fine with it. I have no problem getting... I I think the upside of Luke Rayleigh is higher than the upside of Jose Caballero, at least in my opinion. So um, I I would absolutely do that deal all all days of the week. Um, Again, Rayleigh being a left-handed hitter should succeed in T-Mobile Park. I think it can be a really good fit for him. Um, Kind of interesting. You know, I wonder if... They do some kind of platoon here. Let me pull up Rayleigh's numbers against lefties real quick. And that's probably something I should have done for doing this. Let me see if I can find it in here. I wonder if they're thinking of doing some kind of platoon with Rayleigh and Kaniger to maybe keep Mitch Haniger healthy. Um, you know, not having him play every day because you can't have, you could have Haniger platoon with Canzone. Uh, but I don't know if you want Luke Rayleigh taking every day, nece- you know, necessarily every day at bats. Let's see if I can pull up his splits here. Um, apologize for doing this on the go, but I want to get this. Vi- I want to get the video up. Um, and it was just a thought that popped into my head as I was doing the video. So let me see if I can find his splits. Of course, I can never find things when I'm trying to do it. You know, when I'm on video, if I wasn't doing the video, I'd find this in two seconds. But now that I'm doing the video. Okay, I just went ahead and paused it and looked it up. So um, most of Rayleigh's played appearances, not shocking, were against righties, 363 against righties, only 43 against um, lefties total. He did OPS 741 against lefties, but a very, very limited sample size, and he babbipped almost 400 in that sample size against lefties. So probably someone they're going to look to platoon, and you're not going to platoon with Canzone because Canzone's a lefty. So I do wonder if we get some kind of Rayleigh Hanniger platoon out there. It allows Mitch to have some time off until he can show he's healthy enough to play every day. And it allows Luke Rayleigh to primarily play against righties. I don't know. I, I would think that's the initial goal of what they're going to do. And then you're going to have Canzone in the other spot. Um, I, 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 I like the Caballero for Rayleigh deal if it goes down. The other deal, I, so I would give that one, let's see, as far as a grade, a B, B minus. I don't like love it, love it. I don't think it's necessarily, you know, how can I word it? it it's not necessarily like, a, oh my gosh, this is all putting this team over the top, but they needed outfield depth and Luke Rayleigh is really intriguing. I like that deal. I don't think it's necessarily the steal of the century, um, but I do think Caballero does have some value that people are missing. Really good defensive player. Um, actually hit lefties pretty well. I know he was hit or miss at times. So I, I don't necessarily think like losing Cobby is just like a slam dunk, but I do like the trade. The other one to me is kind of a, uh, you know, I don't know what to make of the the the, the Ray Hanniger trade. I'm excited to have Mitch Hanniger back. Um, I think he could help if you can get him healthy and get him right. Maybe being in a familiar spot will help that. Um, I do think there's a chance it's very risky. Not so much risky in the trade. I don't have a problem. Let me, you know what? That's how I'm going to look at this. The trade is fine. I have no problem getting the Robbie Ray contract off the books and taking some stuff on. But for this team to contend and this team to win, they're going to need Mitch Hanniger to be good. Uh, You can't afford to have Mitch Hanniger not out there playing. You need at least 2022 Mitch Hanniger to show up. Um, And that that's a question mark. So, um, you know, I, I don't know if there's any moves at this point this team can make that don't have some bit of a question mark to them. I mean, outside of, you know, Shohei Otani, Yamamoto, and even there, we don't know, but I, I everybody's kind of a question mark. So it's an interesting move. Um, I'm not going to say here, say I absolutely love it. I, I think it can work out. I definitely think it can make the team better. I think the team is better with that move because you weren't, I wasn't expecting anything from Robbie Ray. So you plug Mitch Hanniger in there. Um, I think he's better than, than Marlowe. Um, 
And if you're platooning with Ray, I think that's really interesting. I, I do think there are ways D. Scalfini can help. Um, I'm not really going to count him as a plus necessarily, but it's 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 good depth. It's kind of in the same vein when I talked about adding a guy like Rich Hill at the deadline last year. It wasn't, I think, Rich Hill put the team over the top. It just it gave them a little better floor for the rotation. So I, I will say this, for all the players that are moving in these moves, I don't know, I, I, this is just talking about the giant trade. I don't know how much it moves the needle. Um, Luke Rayleigh's exciting. I do like that. Um, and welcome back to Seattle Mitch Hanniger. So we'll see what happens. Let me know your thoughts in the comments down below. As more details come, I'll do another video on this trade. I just wanted to get this up right away to give my initial thoughts on it. We may find out more and there may be more wheeling and dealing. So more to come on this. Everything I'm saying in here, put an eye on it for incomplete because there's still a lot of stuff to be discussed about it. But initially, I'd give it all a B. I don't know. Um, I, I, I think it's kind of a, a lot of moving parts for not a, a necessarily a ton of movement on the team, but there's definitely scenarios where this can work out and be good moves. I do like Caballero for Rayleigh. We'll see if that goes through. Have a good one, everybody. I may be back later tonight with more stuff on this trade. Have a great weekend, everybody. Like, comment, subscribe, and I'll see y'all later. Peace.